Hey everyone, I'm Lillian. And I'm Felipe. And we are the Postmodern Family. We're an American family living in the UK, living a traditional life. If you're interested in watching our videos, we make three new videos a week. So we encourage you to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll know when we put out new videos. In this episode, we're going to react to a episode one or first episode on the story behind Fred Dibna. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Fred Dibna. So someone in the comments left a note saying, hey, you should check out Fred Dibna, who apparently is a steeplejack, which I guess is some kind of specialized trade dealing with steeples. The BBC did a series in which they followed the sort of work he used to do and how that reflected changes in industry and changes in Great Britain at large. So it's kind of like it captures the changing story of Great Britain. So it's really interesting from a historical perspective. Um, the Great Britain of today is is very different than the Great Britain of the 1950s and 1960s. So it's a window into that period to see how things were. And that's why I'm interested. So let's have a look. This series of programs is about a man's climb to a sort of fame and the effect it had on his life and the lives of those around him. So that's a steeple Fred Dibner, then. the Bolton steeplejack, was 40 years old when back in 1978, he took part in the first of 19 films, which would record the ups and downs of his eventful career. So they sent me to an undertaker, as you say, where, you know, it, it sort of, bloody hell, all them boxes, you know, and trestles, and even the undertaker himself looked like a corpse, so, you know, and I got enough money to buy five ladders. And then one day, lo and behold, the Vicar of Bolton, Canon Norburn, rung up. Uh... Fred's opening move in the factory chimney side of the business had been to clap a little one on his mother's house, which mm. for the rest of her life he had to sweep because nobody else would. Oh, how do you do? Is that all right? How do you do? Oh, well, we've, you know, not so well. But, um, doing our best. We'll all be done very smartly and speedily as possible. It's an interesting hat. <laughs> I'm having trouble understanding what he's saying because of his accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so pleasant uh, on a Monday morning when it's cold and wind's blowing and you look up like, you know, and you uh -huh. think, oh, oh, God, you know. So <laughs> yeah, this year uh, it's been mm -hmm. windy. Nearly every day, I don't think we've had above a month when the weather's been really decent. See, they've been blowing a force nine or uh, raining or... It's tied you know, up. There's no, like, support <laughs> line. No, he's not, rigged. he's not tied um, into so anything. So you suffer. Very interesting, he doesn't use the rungs with his hands. This particular job, this. I've got the contract for £7,000 to knock it down a brick at once. Right, right down to the bottom. It looks scary. <laughs> The reason for the price were uh, I didn't really want the job. Like if it if it had been a repair job, wow. uh, which you know on average takes what a month, five weeks, mm -hmm. uh, it's not so bad. But when it comes into months and months, you see it's a bit different. Furthermore, when there's only like one of you. Uh, and such a gigantic pile of bricks. Yeah, you know, you've got to have a stout heart to <laughs> yeah, take stout it on, heart. on your own. Yeah. Stout heart is right. A lot of trouble so he's then, saying there are the too many buildings in the vicinity to blow it up. Getting bowled up and you're forever more mm. waiting for the bloke at the bottom to clear out the bricks and you've got to make sure he's out of the way because if you drop one down and it comes shooting out and hits him on back at neck, he's, uh, mm. he's dead. Mm -hmm. I've never fell off a big chimney, you know. You only fall off one of them once, like. <laughs> one day, I fell off a pair of steps in a little girl's bedroom and landed on a driller machine and knocked mm. myself unconscious. And what? I don't remember much about it, but morning after, I couldn't get out of bed and I had to stay there for three weeks, <laughs> all through falling off a pair of steps. And, you know, that's about the only injury I've ever you done. You only myself. fall off a chimney once. Mm. 
you've got to have a man who has got a reasonable amount in grey matter. Like here, grey this matter. noise of these fans. It's like brain going, again? It's impossible to shout. You see, you get some young lad, like his, uh, his heart can be in right place, but if he sees a girl in the office, he wanders away, and sort of when you need him, you know, you look <laughs> down and he's gone. And you see, he keeps me out of the pub. Keeps me out of the pub. There's the tea. Is it a builder's tea? Oh, look at that. Something's gone wrong with it, don't <laughs> Bricks are coming out of the water, aren't they? Mm, what are they eating? Mm, that looks like a Big Mac. Cheese, what is it again? Cheese. Cheese sandwich? Mm. So I guess back in this time, a lot of the factories were coal-fired. Well, so you would have a lot of these smokestacks. People so he was very busy say, man. Uh, you were always drunk when he went up, like, you know, sort of. He's being I, I wouldn't say that I've ever done it drunk, but if you were banging away with a big hammer all day, a few pints, Why you know, don't do you any harm, you know, it sort of way. kills the pain. Uh, <laughs> there's no doubt about that, you know. Um, Man, that's painstaking work. Yeah. Dinner with the family. She looks like Maria. Happy at his work, devoted to his family, Fred nevertheless had a competing interest to which he was hopelessly addicted. This 1912 Abling and Porter steamroller, which had taken him 14 years to rebuild. So that's right, that's the other this bit about thing him. This me, you know, uh, it's a death do us part job because nearly caused divorce and much upset in the household <laughs> and no holidays and, you know, all that what sort of doing? thing. Well, you know, you love your, your steamroller more than you love me and all that. Oh, I think <laughs> you love the steamroller more than me. A lot of men who have these things will have gone through. Bring your wife back. complains yeah. that, you know, I'm, I spend more time here than I do over there in the house, you see. Well... You know, I suppose in a way it's better than being down the pub all night or, you know, mm -hmm. out womanising or, you know, doing breaking and entering or something like that. Well, I keep telling her, you know, there's not every woman who's got a steamroller named after her, you know. <laughs> there it is. Mm -hmm. So then what, do you, what, do you just smash it? Smash stuff with it? Like flatten things with it? Yeah. Where is it going? Mm -hmm. I have neglected my business and well, everything really for the sake of this 10 ton of iron. Here again, Look at that suit. nice and healthy. You know, Sideburns. Uh, we might end up here. Pretty quick, you know. Um, you can complete it by the end of October, could you, friend? Mm, possible, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back on steam. <laughs> on a Sunday in 1979, he did one at Rochdale, which unforeseeably set him on the road to fame. This is the job, Fred. These two chimneys, uh, they won't drop it. Oh, when you've got rid of Mill, uh, there'll be plenty of room to fly. My main competition is the, the dynamite men when it comes to felling a chimney. You know, so they only need a, a quarter of money at once. On television, everyone you see going down, it's blown up. Well, you've not really done so much, you know. You just destroyed something that it took a few men a long time to erect and a lot of hard bloody sweat and labour. And when they finished it off, no doubt, they put the Union Jack up. And you've just blown it up with pressing a button. <laughs> Whereas if you've got to hack your way through three foot of brickwork at the bottom with a few hundred tons squeezing on it, you know, um, you know, it's not dying too easy, has it? It's interesting. It said it merits a noble death. <laughs> So it's dangerous to be opening a hole at the I've bottom. I've had instances yeah. where people have come where I've wanted a couple of hundred But that's how he does it, right? Is 25 quid and they've done somewhere. it, you know, madmen, you know, no top. pit props, nothing. Just chop the bottom out like a tree. So is that what they're trying to do right now is like fell it like a tree? Yeah, I think so. Oh my. I've got to get it down a 60 foot slot, you know, well, 
from that day to the Sunday that we did it, you know, my nervous system weren't too good. <laughs> Man, I want to see this one fall. As he's knocked down bits of it, he's propped it up with wood, and then he's going to create a fire, and that's going to burn the wood supports off, and then it's going to top them. And then so they can all run away. Yeah, they'll start the fire and run away. That makes sense. Oh, he's back again. Oh, you're mean to you. Their outfit uniforms have not changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything's like beautiful. That. Um, right. more of a mind. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 What is he holding? I think that's, that's a torch. It is his wife who's going to do it. Mm. Yeah. You can give it me, man. And you run away now. Oh. What? Alright. Because you can't have a failed fire, and that would be more dangerous to try to do it again. Mm. Yeah. He's still standing there. Why? He, he's confident it's going to fall a certain way, yeah. and he's not going to get hit. So he's staying put, isn't he? Ooh. That wind? Yeah. What's that from? That uh, might be a current created by the chimney. It's going! It's going. It's going. Is that Talking a warning? A horn. That's a warning. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Oh my. Go for it. That's exciting. Right in the right shop, isn't it? Look, there's a neck. Is that the same one? I think it's the same one. Whoa. Perfect. Right exactly where they wanted it. Look at Slow motion. Right there. So, what do you think? It's very interesting, yeah. What was most interesting to you? I always find it interesting that there are people out there who find a niche job and mm. um, like they're like the only ones who seem to know it well and are sought after. Mm. Like we met a guy who unfortunately passed away about two years ago, um, mm. who was the, like the only guy who could do compass something. Um, yeah, sea compasses. Yeah, and he was like, he, he was like the only guy who could do it. And yeah, the MOD would get him to do it on their ships and everything. Yeah, and even he said, even when he um, got a ticket or something and they were going to mm. take his license away, they, mm. they gave him a, uh, they waived it. Mm. Because they, he was needed by the government. He was needed by the government to, mm. yeah, to drive and do the compasses. Yeah. So similarly, this guy seems like, you know, he's the only guy, he's an expert in what he does, and mm. it's really cool. Also that he has such humble beginnings and humble, be like, living lifestyle, mm. uh, even though he he carries a lot of knowledge um, mm. and gut. Yeah. yeah, I was most taken by the, the sort of nonchalance at the risk. Mm. So he's climbing up without safety harnesses, but I guess that might have been common back then. Mm. He's walking around the top of the chimney. Um, without safety harnesses, mm -hmm. and then he stays close as the fire burns. So he's just yeah. uh, kind of like a a hard, gritty workman. Um, he's just doing his job and does it well. Yeah. Um, and and you feel that tension between him and the pinstripes. Yeah. Uh, who are driving, you know, Jags, yeah. Jaguars. Um, yeah. So that was that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Why did they want it to burn that? Because he's no longer using it, and they wanted to take it down. And he said, you know, I, I, have, uh, I have workmen, but I can't get a, a young lad because he might see a, an office girl, <laughs> and then I lose my protection. Yeah. So. And also, the interesting part about his wife and the tension between the steamroller and his wife, and mm. how it takes his attention away, but then, then yeah. again, he's not off at the pub, so. Yeah. Yeah.
Thanks for watching this episode. We hope we didn't put you to sleep. Uh, this is I picked this episode. I'm interested in history and the, the way things have changed. I know many of you are just thinking, what is this? But there you have it. Bye. Bye.